Hello, my name is uh, Stathis Kostadinivis and I'm the project coordinator of the SEPEH uh, Erasmus Plus project. On behalf of the SEPEH consortium, I'll talk you through some of the challenges that we encounter while co-creating educational chatbots and how these challenges led us to the construct of a crowd-based Aspire framework. Uh, educational chatbots have uh, started to appear. Uh, they can be divided in two big categories, the chatbots that have some educational uh, intentionality and the ones without any educational uh, intentionality. And they can be uh, really simple at the remember stage of the Bloom taxonomies, but they can be really complicated reaching even the, the create level of uh, Bloom's taxonomy. The SEPEC projects are strongly believe in collaborative uh, design. In the University of Nottingham, we use participatory design for open educational resources for the last uh, 15 years, reaching people around the globe and creating really high impact. The Aspire framework has been widely used to develop smartly reusable learning objects. The Aspire framework was chosen based on its high success on the participatory de development of reusable learning objects which is ByteWise web-based open education resources for healthcare education and its successful adaptation for large courses and virtual reality resources. The Aspire framework stands for AIM, storyboarding, population, implementation, release and evaluation, corresponding to the following steps. Participatory workshops, specification writing, peer review of the specification, development of the open education resource, review of the open, of the open education resource, evaluation with stakeholders and then publishing the open educational resource. We use the design science approach to construct an adapted version of Aspire framework in order to fit the development of chatbots for healthcare education. The design science approach has two main activities. First, the artifact is built and then it's being evaluated to identify how it performs. Multiple, multiple rounds can follow. In the first iteration, we tested the existing framework during the demonstration uh, stage. We conducted an online participatory workshop with students and then we defined uh, the specifications which we reviewed. We had to adapt on the fly the specifications as uh, text-based form could not be easily fulfilled and identify the intended paths. The first pile of development revealed different areas that needed uh, to be considered considered such as uh, multiple interactions at each point are possible, prevent the learners getting frustrated by a poor learning experience, training data provided by the developer. During the release phase, we found out that the more wise, complicated the chatbot is, the more time needed to recompile after small changes. So several uh, areas of improvement are identified at the evaluation st stage through three project teams meetings and one meeting with stakeholders. In each of those meetings, facilitators of the workshops, participants, learning technologies, or web developers and tutors or content creators reflected and on the co-creation process. We evaluated each phase of uh, the Aspire framework separately and we tried to find out how its phase can be improved and what could be the benefits and the contributions for its participants in the Aspire process. That led us to the second iteration of the design science approach. A set of objectives for the framework were identified to fit the development of educational chatbots. Those were to raise awareness of uh, the stakeholders regarding chatbots. Stakeholders in a participatory workshop to co-design a chatbot usually have little or no experience of using chatbots, thus they are unaware of their functionalities and capabilities. To reform the storyboarding workshop, we refined detail uh, on the assets and various chatbot interactions. At the traditional storyboarding uh, workshop with different screens proved to be non-functional, a graph-based workshop organized around themes and discussion could be more useful. To obtain more training data, training data need uh, multiple uh, users in order to be efficient and valid. Furthermore, alternative answers should be provided in the training of the chatbot by experts to reform specifications to reflect on reflection between questions. The traditional specification describing and using specific text and assets needs to be connected with relevant triggers or questions by the user. To achieve this objective in the next uh, uh, stage uh, design development of the design science approach, we added an information phase in the Aspire framework 
using presentation of chatbots and experimentation with chatbots prior to the participatory workshop. While the first part of the workshop remained the same in defining themes, we developed a crowd-based platform for learners to add potential questions and answers and the type of interactions and assets which they expect from a chatbot. The specification moved from a linear format to a topic-oriented format. The specifications can now be built within the crowd-based platform from experts by reviewing and correcting learner's input a process emphasizing uh, relations between questions. From a review based on text form where the reviewer can follow the linear object, we moved to a crowd-based co-creation tool in which the reviewer can review all questions, answers and connections. Additional experts can conduct reviews on all responses in a more organized way. During the development phase of the Aspire, the crowd-based platform for co-creating an educational chatbot provides the chatbot structure and data output, which can be subsequently uploaded into a chatbot development environment such as RASA. Technical review is more challenging as user input can be unpredictable, thus evaluation based on multiple scenarios preferred. Learning technologies development time is minimized, but still required to sanitize the data and ensure the flow of the discourse. Following such detailed specifications also minimize the number of recompiles needed to release the chatbot. An initial pilot chatbot evaluation within the project team showed that the adapted Aspire framework fits better to the development of chatbots. Different stakeholders agreed that the modified Aspire framework utilizing the crowd-based platform to co-create educational chatbots can be more efficient and adapting to its user needs. Further evaluation is needed with end users of the chatbot measuring both their experience during the co-design workshop, the use of the crowd-based platform, but also measure the usability of chatbots, including chatbot personality, user experience and error handling. This work already communicates the difficulties identified through the adaptation of Aspire framework to develop an educational chatbot. While further evaluation is needed with learners and content creators, this piece of work suggests an adapted crowd-based Aspire framework can be utilized for designing educational chatbots. This work is supported by the Erasmus Plus Strategic Partnership in uh, Higher uh, Education, the SEPEH uh, project of the European Union. Thank you for your attention.